So when we enter a extremely stressful state, and what we also know is that dissociation and depersonalization are oftentimes associated with severe trauma. So basically what the brain does. Yes, depersonalization and realization happen at the point of traumatic stress. Whenever you feel too overwhelmed to fight or flee, you go into the freeze response. It's also called the trauma response. And your brain is basically preparing you to be eaten by a lion by shutting down the brain regions that are associated with you feeling connected to your body, yourself, and your environment. Because if you're going to be eaten by the lion, you might as well not feel it. It's basically nature's last gift. Does Our brain has this protective mechanism where if the pain is too much, yes. we're going to unplug from yes. our internal experience. Yes, depersonalization and realization are dissociative symptoms. Dissociation comes from a Latin root word that means to sever or separate. Dissociation technically is a broad umbrella term that describes a wide range of ways that our brain separates us from painful experiences with the mild end of the spectrum being daydreaming, right? You're just talking to somebody and they're talking about something that's not interesting and your mind just kind of starts to wander into what you're gonna eat for lunch or something else. Um, and then you swing the pendulum to the extreme end of the spectrum, you have other extreme forms of dissociation too, but depersonalization, feeling out of body, like you and your body are a separate entity or derealization, everything feeling fake and dreamlike. Um, these are very extreme uh, traumatic forms of dissociation, okay? It's the way that your brain uh, brings relief through separation. Whenever your nervous system is overwhelmed, you've entered the freeze response and your brain thinks that you're about to eat by a lion. But as you know, if you're experiencing these symptoms, I went through them two years, 24, seven, five years off and on, you can experience these symptoms without actually being eaten by a lion, especially what usually happens, not always, but usually there's just a very painful history and the person doesn't know how to self-regulate. And you could see it as like, you know, a cup filling up with water over time. And then eventually there's some sort of escalating event that pushes you into overwhelm, but usually you're walking around at like a seven or eight baseline level of stress for quite a while. That definitely was what happened with me. Um, but then there are people, so that would be more like a complex trauma situation, but there definitely are people that experience what's called a major trauma, which is, you know, they were walking around at like a one or a two out of 10 stress. And then there's a situation that literally overwhelms their nervous system. And it is primarily that situation that just really, really shocked them, overwhelmed them. But most of, the, which is called a major trauma, it's like a lightning strike, but most of the clients I work with, that's not the case. And that definitely wasn't my case. I had a long history of stress and I was basically like a volcanic eruption just waiting to erupt with overwhelming stress.